Hello folks, welcome to Casas Belly introduces Dominion. Now I did try to ask for a few friends to play some non-solo content together and we ended up playing Dominion for a bit. Now with non-solo content I don't get to explain the game in the videos, so what I figured is that for those series where it's very really long running, so if I have a video to explain, it will be one of the first or second videos. Or if it's like non-solo content where I don't get to really talk about what I'm thinking and more about just talking with friends over some games, I'll do separate intro videos. And uh, this is the first example of that. Now, I'm new to this game, just learned it yesterday, but I'll do my best because uh, if you see two people playing a, a board game that you don't know, like it's really hard to figure out what the mechanics are. So I want to figure that I put a video like this so that if afterwards when I put up some of the Dominion videos, you know, it's easier for people to watch and understand. And I keep on looking on my second monitor. Just get used to that. That will happen a lot. So well, being with that being said, let's uh, jump right in. So, you know, we say no to editing, and with the the proper production value, we can avoid editing altogether. So this is like uh, the setup. Um, so. Dominion is a deck builder kind of board game, right? What does so we have the layout already? We're using like a website for it, so all the actions are scripted. It's all nice and well. Would you see that these are card piles, right? And then they uh, the top number in red means that, for example, there's ten cardinal cards in this pile, and uh, it's really in the setup. You take these cards, you put them all over the board. They have text and active and stuff. Oh, so that's like the if you buy the actual physical card. That's what it looks like. But you know, first of all, let's talk about it, right? The kind of the mechanics, and let's go through the win conditions, and uh, and now play the game against AI, which I have set up here. If you are interested in seeing like an actual game happening, uh, but because usually when I'm playing with friends, I don't talk about my strategies because they're I'm playing against my opponent on the same call. We kind of just chat and then banter around. But playing as AI, I can put my thoughts through about it, and plus I'm. Now with the game, I don't know pretty much er any of the cards in <laughs> on the table right now, so even myself. Uh, but the idea being that Dominion is a deck uh, builder. So what happens that you see this, this is my starting cards. I have 7 coppers and 3 states, right? So with deck building games in general, what you do is that you start with this de deck of 10 cards. And throughout the game, you you can modify your deck. So for example, there's usually a drafting or like a buying mechanism. Different games use different text for it. And what happens is like throughout the game, you add cards, people, enemies can attack your deck by putting garbage into your deck. You can use uh, cards with specific effects, like the chapel, this one I recognize. You can trash, well in this, in this case means like just remove them from your deck so that you maintain a deck that you build throughout the game and you use that to pour for, to play throughout the entire game and different rounds for it. For all deck builders, why do you maintain this deck is that every round you kind of like, you draw, is like you shuffle your deck uh, in the beginning of the game or like whenever you, re you reshuffle, you will draw cards. So for Dominion, you draw 5 cards. So I have 10 cards right now. In the first turn, for example, I'll draw 5 of them. And then after, so in Dominion, at the end of every round, you would just like, you play your cards following the rules, which I'll explain later. And if you have any cards left over, they go to the discard pile, you do not keep them in your hand. This is quite common for pretty much all deck builders, right? And then the next, and then you shuffle your deck, oh sorry, um, you draw cards. Now when your draw pile is empty, because your deck is like 10 cards, after 2 hands it's empty. If I have 13 cards, you know, I'll draw 3 and then on the 3rd round, I have empty uh, draw pile. I will shuffle the cards in my discard pile, put them there, and then randomly draw. So really, you're you're playing the game to interact with what's in your in your like reservoir of cards uh, that has abilities and all that such, and then uh, you draw them randomly. So you can take you can tailor your deck for specific combos, etc. That's like in general what our all deck builders are, and Dominion's. Uh, not different in that regard, right? So it's, it's all the same. And here is that, uh, what other mechanics are Dominion specific? Um, there is a action phase and the buy phase. So from what I know, uh, I mean, I do know this. In the beginning, you every round, you get, uh, you draw five cards, you have one action, and these, these cards, for example, are action cards, right? 
So that means if I have, if I draw my hand, and I happen to have like a a goat herd in my hand. I can play this card. You have if I have two of them, I can only play one, right? Because I want action per turn. There are action cards that give you more action, right? There are action cards that give you more buys, which is another interaction. I don't know if any of them have buy. Plus one buy. Okay, this is a treasure. Is I'll get to that in a bit, but. Uh, you get one buy. This is how you draft cards, right? You get gold. So these are coppers are one gold, silvers are two, gold is gold is three. You in the buy phase after the action phase has completed, you cannot play any more actions anymore. You may take the the treasures that are in your hand, put them as a, how much gold you're gonna put up this turn because you're gonna discard them at the end of uh, your turn anyways, and enter the buy phase. You can buy one thing with stuff like plus one buy. You can buy two things, but you know, obviously you need the you need to go to afford it. So over time you want to build actions into your deck, you want to build treasures into your deck so that every turn you can possibly play one or more actions to influence the game. And in the buy phase, buy one or more things to get uh, the, the more advantages, more cars, better build your deck, or go for a win condition. So the win condition is important, right? Because that's the goal of the game. You have this deck that you build around to achieve you know the game to win now what that is is that is uh, in, in most card games is some form of victory points right so you see right now i have three victory points so this ai you start a game of three estates which are victory point cards and you can see that there's like a bunch of them here uh duchy for five gold is three victory points province for eight gold is sorry for eight coins i keep on saying gold gold is here uh, for a coins is uh, six with three points. Now the thing about this game is that you see how if I draw a state in the early game, like any of the victory cards in the early game, they don't do anything, right? They they're not a treasure to buy more stuff. They're not an action to to you know gain advantages and such. So they're dead draws. They're pretty much just cards that they're status cards, right? So if you have them too, if you go for victory points too early. What, you, what happens is that you draw into them more often and you do less per turn and uh, you should do that when you're about to win like, but you want to stay ahead of the opponent because otherwise you know they, they can reach the win condition the game ends and you have lost already so this game can be played with even up to five players or something like that there are different rules but uh, for example right now i'm playing uh 1v1 versus uh, the computer i think the the rules here are similar to up to four players even so there's a uh, not much of a of a difference uh, as you will see on the channel if I play this game but ideas being like uh, uh, you have victory points that way highest victory point by the end of the game wins that's the win condition and you also have curses which uh, you know just subtract your victory points now when does the game end the game ends in two ways one is that if all eight of the province cards has been bought out right they're, they're gone and then the game ends. Whoever at that moment has the uh, most victory point just wins the game. After that action ends. So you can, for example, if you buy out the province and you still have one more buy, I have gold, I have money, coins on the in the buy phase, you have more buys. You don't lose right away, you can maybe buy another duchy and then break it over, right? So the, the, the game doesn't technically end, but at the end of your action or turn, when after the buy phase, the game ends. And then you tally the scores. Uh, in real life, you have to do the math, but in uh, in the web, you kind of you get the victory points just laying there. So it's it's it good, right? It's, it helps uh, with the play experience. Um, another one condition is that sorry, another game end condition is that you see how there are many cards, right, in the in this deck. Uh, th these are called landscapes, which I'll get to later. But the idea is being that you um, and this is a way actually. This is not even land. This is their landscape, this is a way, and this is like a pro an event, not a project. There's uh, four types of these things. I just learned that today. But the idea is that if these piles of cards, there's 10 of, of these, 30 gold, etc. If three of the piles exhaust completely, as in, if between me and my opponent, we bought all the stockpiles, we bought all the grooms, we bought all the cardinals, uh, the game ends. If we bought all the duchies, like any combination of three complete piles of cards gets exhausted in the game uh, from the supply, which is just really just uh, the board, right? Uh, then the game ends and whoever has a victory point wins. So there's two conditions, right? In 
in games up to four players, it is if three of the if three of any piles are depleted, the game ends. Or if the province piles are depleted, the game ends immediately. Uh, sorry, the game ends, and then you compare victory points. So there's a a few different ways you can play this, right? Because just you may not need to get buy out all the provinces. You might be just ahead on victory points, and you clear three piles, the game ends, and you win. There's a there's an interesting level of strategy here, and I do like this game a lot. Now, I think that's really it. The rest is really just knowing the cards. And the good thing about this is that on the web version, all the expansions are available. But I think it's like if you play on a free account, they're rotated. And the expansion has more cards than what's on the table here. So every single time, what you end up doing is that you, uh, you, have, different, you have a different game every time. Like, I don't recognize anything on this board in, the, in this table besides the, the council room which I've seen once and the chapel which I've seen twice, right? I've played this game less than four times th so far. So every single time, I'm, to me, this is really fun because I had to read the cards, figure out a strategy, try to execute that strategy and, you know, win the game. And uh, that is a, it is a rewarding experience, right? If you play board games, this is kind of like, you get your brain juices flowing, it's, uh, it's quite exciting. So now what I'll do is I'll jump into, I'm going to play against this AI, I'm going to read the cards, and that's going to be this episode, right? Now, if you know Dominion, it's probably going to be boring, but uh, for me, I mean, maybe if I like this game so much, I'll play against random people on the website as well. Uh, I'm not sure if there's some matchmaking. But if I'm playing solo, I get to talk about what I'm thinking. Now, if I'm playing against a friend and my opponent's in the same Discord call, I can't really be like, oh, my play is that I'm gonna go for supplies. Like, then I kind of uh, leak all the strategies there are. But like, you know, I don't think when I'm playing with friends is like truly play to exclusively for win. But uh, it's definitely there. Like, winning feels good in all games. So with all I said, you know, if you're familiar with the game, maybe this is it. But uh, thanks for watching. You know, <laughs> leave like, leave comments, subscribe to the channel. But for now, we'll we'll get into this game. So. Uh, game doesn't start yet, I haven't hit start game yet, but I do like to read these cards. So Cartno plus 2 gold, when I play this action card, it's attack card. Each other player, besides myself, reveals the top 2 cards in their deck. Exile 1 costing from 3 to 6 and discard the rest. Exile means... Uh, I don't mean think it means trash? I don't... Hmm. I don't know why there's a word called trash, which means the card is removed from the game. Exile, I'm not sure if it means going back to supply. I actually don't know, so we'll find out. Groom, gain a card costing up to four. If it's an action card, gain a horse and a, gain a horse treasure card. Gain a silver victory card, plus one card, plus one action. Hold on, what? Gain a card costing up to four. That means if I buy this action card and I play that in my turn, I can pick up any other card that costs up to four, and if I use that uh, ability to buy an action card, I get a horse. Get a horse treasure card. The horse is an action card though. Gain a silver victory card, plus one card and plus one action. Uh, plus one card means you draw one card, plus one action because uh, means you can replay it again. So I feel that this card cycles itself, you get the action, you can do something with it. But I'm not sure, like just reading the text here, I'm not fully sure what it does, but we'll play this game out completely and maybe I'll figure it out. Council room is plus four cards and plus one buy. Each other player draws a card. So you play this card in your turn, everybody else draws one, you draw four, you can buy one more, but use your action. So you know, it's kind of like pushing for, you when you draw cards, you get a lot of treasures, and maybe you want to buy a lot of stuff. You want to buy two things at least in this turn to put that, to push that with council room uh, and killing plus two gold plus sorry plus two coins. I need to get used to saying that. The next time you play a card this turn, you may first gain a copy of it. Hmm. So you have multiple actions. You can play this just for you know some coins to enter the buy phase, but also clone another card. But you see, this card cannot be played when you only have one action per turn, because you play this and it's done. Now, actually, it might not be action card. You can play this, and next time you play a card is by playing a treasure, like a copper, in the buy phase, right? So we will see how that interacts soon. Uh, mine, 
You may trash a treasure from your hand, gain treasure up to, gain tre treasure up to your hand, costing up to three more than it. That means like okay, if I bought this, it's in my hand. I have a copper. I can use this card. I remove a copper from my deck, which, you know, copper is only one coin, right? So maybe it's good to get rid of it so I don't draw more coppers because they're low value in some sense. And I can get a treasure up to three more than it, so I can get like silver, which is three costs. So I can trash my copper for silver, trash my silver for gold. If there's other treasure like spices, which is two, you can I can technically trash that for silver too, but it sounds like that doesn't look like a particularly good thing. But this is a card to kind of start trading the currency, the treasures in your hand in your deck to be better over time. And hand grooming and deck grooming is very useful as you see like chapel. Pretty much the same thing. You just literally just like you play this action, you get rid of some cards you don't want. So for example, if I have Chapel right now, I may want to get rid of all my victory points. Because the game isn't ending anytime soon, I want to draw better cards over time. And then go for a big play to finish. I've done that in a game. Uh, I have no idea if it's optimal or if it's good. But I've done that and it worked out for me so far. Supplies. Oh, is that the horse treasure card? Is this what it is? When you play this, gain a horse onto your deck. So I play this, I get a horse. It's a treasure, so I, it's, a one, it's one coin when I play it, so it's like a copper. Uh, but I get a horse, a horse is draw, and so you can play another action. So this is, the horse is great. This is not in the supply, you return to the, ho to the horse pile. So it's, I don't know what that means. I don't, I mean, this is a shared horse pile, right? You never run out the horses. But anyways, what it is is that I play this card, I can play, I use an action, but I gain the action back, I can play another card, and I effectively use this card to draw, right? So this this card is like, you have these, uh, uh, usually in the deck builder games, you have draw or mana, like, uh, balances, right? So action is like mana, if you watch me play Slay the Spire, cards is just draw. So this card is like, like mana neutral and draw positive. I play this, I cycle the card, which means it's a good, you know, the card existing isn't bad, and I get an extra card pretty much. So this card is card advantage. Of course that is. Goat Herd, plus one action. So it cycles itself. You may trash a card from your hand, plus one card per card the player to your right trash in their last turn. So there's a lot of interactions with the other player. Uh, I'll think about it, probably I won't. My, my brain is too, too small size to uh, play this kind of stuff. <laughs> Stockpile. Uh, this is a gold pretty much. It's a gold that gets you one more buy, which is amazing. But when you play it, exile it. I do not know what the exile mechanic is. I am too in the middle of things to, do, to Google to find out, but we'll just learn about it over time. Uh, that being said, like groom, maybe I can gain a card, I can buy a groom, I can use a groom to buy a stockpile, right? So I guess, see this thing, our stockpile is like a gold that costs half as much. But you can only use it once, but when you use it, you can buy one more thing. So that's kind of the way to look at it. Vassal, plus two gold, discard, discard the top card of your deck. If it's action card, you may play it. Uh, okay. That's interesting. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I won't reference other games. Because uh, if you don't know Slay the Spire, that doesn't mean anything either, right? But the idea is being, I take the top card and I discard it, but if it's an action, it happens to be by luck, I can choose to let that card take effect. So it's a action for two coins in your buy phase, but a random chance at playing another action that is a random card in your deck. So it depends on how you want to do this, it's good. Now these cards are landscapes. That means that if I pay for the four coins here in my buy phase, which uses a buy, I put my tokens, which are, don't show up until I start a game here. Or because it's an event, it doesn't work that way, I'm not too sure. Because I've done that with projects, which is like you have a token, you put it on there. Uh, bargain. Gain a non-victory card costing up to 5. Each other player gains a horse. Horse is extremely relevant. I do think that like you pay 4 coins to buy this event and gain a... No. No, you can do this many times. So you just do this you gain a non-victory card. So you, you can use uh, four gold, sorry, you can use four coins to buy any non-victory card that co that's, that's five coins. You can, I can effectively use four coins to buy like a mine, which is five coins. 
and uh, but everybody gets a but everybody else gets a horse, which is I talk about how a horse looks great. This combo is is nice. The fact that all three cards are in here, maybe that's scripted to be, but you know, way of the squirrel, plus two cards at the end of this turn. I don't know how ways are interacted. I don't see a way to buy it. I don't know how that how ways interact at all. So we're learning. But let's get started, right? So we hit start game. Uh, so now, for example, I drew five cards. I drew three copper and two estates, and therefore I cannot play any actions. I have to buy, and that's three coppers. So the question being, what do I buy? I can buy a stockpile, a supply, a chapel, or like buy a silver, which increases my improves my draw over time. Supplies when I play it, gain a horse onto my deck. I like that. Horse feels like a really powerful way to draw and into a lot of stuff. And this is just a it's just a copper, right? So what I what I think I'll do is that I will so you you commit gold, you commit sorry, you commit coins by playing your treasures. So I can now buy the three. Maybe Vassal, but I don't have action to really play Vassal yet. I really want to get four gold using Garp Bargain to play the to get a mine to start cycling and getting better currency. But I actually like a chapel here to burn out my estates so I don't draw it in the future. But that being said, there's no cards that gives me curses, right? The curse pile pretty much wouldn't matter here. By the way, I can buy curse and buy copper for zero. I don't. I don't see why I would. Um, so maybe Chapel is not good here. I might just get a supply, which I did, and now the computer has uh, spent four copper and bought the Chapel. So the computer uh, thought about the play and then decided that was better. Um, you know, maybe the computer is right. Again, I only got treasures. So I'm gonna play four of them, and now can now I can buy the bargain. So you know, that's that's cool. Buy the bargain, then what? I can really just buy the groom. If it's an action card, gain a horse treasure card, gain a silver victory card, plus one card, plus one action. I do not like gaining a silver victory card. I don't know what that is. That sounds like duchies and which floods my deck. Maybe I'm just like overthinking it, but from what I'm reading, it sounds like that. And that is not good. Cardinal each other player reveals the top two cards in the deck, exalt one cost and discards the rest. Uh, this is an attack card that makes the opponent's deck draws like you know, you just kinda they build their deck, you made them not ha not have the deck work the way you want them to. So I'm tempted to bargain, and because my opponent's uh you know it's a computer, so let's do this. I can get a card up to five points. That means I can either buy the killing. It's a silver treasure. So it's an action that gives me two gold, uh, a silver worth of coins. That's why, that's why I'm thinking about it this way. But I think I want a mine, right? I want to be able to get the mine and the copper, and then trade copper into silver, trade silver into gold over time. Now, three coppers again. Now that I have action, maybe vassal is is good. Also, it's just, too, it's just like a, it's a silver, right? So, it's a free silver, I'll get it. And then now we have action card. So this is some interactions being here, but also, for some reason, I need to use the washroom. So we'll be right back. And then, uh, just 30 seconds, you know, it's really quick. And we'll be back in a bit. And we are back. 
it wasn't that fast. Start the treadmill up again. Go back to Dominion. Now you may ask, why don't you just use the washroom before recording? I did. That's the thing. I go through an incredible amount of water every day because I walk while I'm playing video games. So, uh, you know, I used to care about it more. Now I just like, yeah, I just put it over there. Go take a walk. Go to for a break. It is what it is. Okay, so we have one action card which we can play. I can play this mine. Wait, squirrel. I see a squirrel on it. What does that mean? Plus two cards at the end of this turn. See, what I don't know is that if I do this, do I do I lose a card? I have no idea how this action is. I've never learned it. But I think let's not do that on my mine card. I'll, I I don't mind doing that on my vassal card because mine card costs a little bit more. I'm going to use uh, mine here and just improve a treasure. So I'll take the copper, confirm trashing. Now I lose uh, gain a treasure up to three gold. I can gain the supplies, which you know, sorry, gain up to three coins. The supply costs two, or I can gain a uh, silver to improve my hand. I'll do that. I can gain a stockpile too. It's also a treasure. Oh, I think I'll do that actually. And they get in my hand. That's a, that's incredible. So I can buy one more if I use this and the exiles. It goes away. I have four gold total this turn, right? So if I play the supplies, actually five gold. Sorry, five coins. Keep on saying it. Still, I'm going to play this. Gain a horse onto your deck. I'm going to do that. I gain the horse somehow. I say I gain the horse now. Do I want to, I can just buy a supply and end it, or I go up to five uh, coins and I can, I lose this card, which is good, but I can buy the two things. So you know, I can buy a supply and the vassal. I think having supplies is the way you can build an engine to really improve things massively. And mine, I think having one is great. Having mine is already, killing can, can clone stockpiles and then you just never you don't run out unless you uh, you use all of them in one turn which could be the final push I'm talking through a lot but I'm not really doing anything so hmm I think early in the game we want to build up like an economy and then you council room and you finish the game right that's kind of the way I like to play even if I don't use the buy I would like to spend the three to gain some advantages or two stockpile, two supplies. Horses are great, but why would horses matter if you don't have other actions you want to play, right? I'm gonna play it. The car goes away. Exhaust a stock stockpile. It does not go to the trash, so I don't know. Maybe it's not even in the trash, so it's just exile. It means out of the game completely. So because there are cars that interact with the trash. Uh, which is kind of like a global discard pile, who knows? I can buy two things up to five coins. I mean, these cards are two gold, right? For the buy phase, I, I like this. I kind of like this. And I can use this to clone supplies while I draw them in the same hand. So let me get a killing. And I can buy, you know, like, well, I'm no gold, but because I have one more buy, I can optionally get a curse or a copper. I would say that is a bad idea. The computer plays something. To copper estate, plays a silver, shuffle a deck, draw. Oh, they play the chapel and remove two coppers and the estate. So they have a really thin deck right now. They have 10 cards total in their deck again. I got a horse, I got a mine. I'm gonna tell you, I'll play the horse first, which cycled itself and drew me two estates. Just did nothing pretty much. And one day I'll find out the way of the squirrel. But mine will thrash the... If I thrash the supply, I can get more stuff, but... Uh, this is a copper. I can get, again, a stockpile for this turn. To just... Because I keep on removing coppers from my deck, and by doing that, I'm getting... I'm literally removing a bad card for temporary gold to buy some better cards, which gave me more coin options. So I'll get a stockpile. I'll keep on doing this. You may resolve an effect. What is that? I thrash a copper. I gain a stockpile. Discard from exile. 
Oh, is it because... I don't understand, because I get it in my hand, but I may just take the card from Exile back into my deck. I'm not sure whether to continue or discard from Exile means anything. I think, okay, so the card, so there's no more stockpile anymore. I think when stockpile runs out, you have to bring stuff back from Exile, from exile back into your, your, your discard pile. You can draw it next turn. I'm just gonna keep it in my hand, and that's kind of what I did. Okay. Complicated, right? Complicated. I mean, buy cards. Same situation as last turn. It's the same thing. But I have 5 gold. So let's play it. And you know what? I like... I'm gonna get rid of... I'm gonna dry out the, the stockpile. I think it's great. I'm gonna buy supplies and stockpile here. I may resolve an effect. Discard two stockpile from exile from exile. From exile, sorry. But what does that mean? I do that, it goes back into my hand. I just I guess I just don't know uh what what exile keyword exile keyword does. That's my problem. Let's try it. Just see what it is. It discards two stockpiles from exile. They didn't do anything to the supply numbers, but that's fine. They got a, the computer got a console room and they burned the estate. That's why the victory point is lower. You know, what, let me click this way of the squirrel. And the two cards at the end of this turn. Does it mean I just like don't get a play a horse using the way of the squirrel? Why would you ever not use that? Does the computer use it? The computer does not use the way of the squirrel, so we will never know. But I have no action to play Killen, but I didn't want to play that anyways. I think I drew into a copper. No, I didn't draw anything. So when I play it this way, I didn't I pretty much traded my action for this default action which makes the next turn better. Okay, so I'm gonna buy supply. I guess that's what it was. And I drew two cards extra. Okay, so it's a way for you to uh, put the action card into a, into this effect. So any action can become this, uh, but use an action. That is nice to know. Now discard, the Vassal is discard the top card of the deck. It's an action I may play it. Gives me two. And this is a good turn, right? Because two, four, you know, uh, six, nine. I have nine coins to buy up to two things this turn if I really want to, you know, Go for something. So let's do it. Let's see what we get. Let's play the Vassal normally. I discarded the Copper. I didn't get to play another, you know, effect. Which, uh... Could be kind of unfortunate or not. I don't mind playing Supplies. Because the horses are are neutral, right? They cycle themselves and they just draw. I don't mind getting any number of horses in my deck. I don't lose anything from it. Unless there's some special interactions with how many cards you can play. But, uh... But I think I'm pretty good there. So, stockpiles. Do I want to get to Nigo and buy two things? For example, the Cardinal. It just messes with their opponent's deck, which I do like sometimes. What's my win? It's just council room into buying a bunch of stuff later on, right? After I improve all my treasures. Let's take a Cardinal because I want Vassal to be able to hit more stuff. So Cardinal and the 5 card, five gold. Let's uh, do Mine. So I'm going to do this. We are nine, we'll have 9 coins. So I'm going to buy a Cardinal and buy a Mine. Okay. It's interesting. What did they do? They shuffled their deck. They burned 3 more coppers. This... My dudes uh, only has uh, five cards in their deck now. One is a Cardinal, so he's never gonna buy anything. I'm not gonna complain. The horses cycle itself and just keep on drawing me stuff. But the horses return to supply, so I kind of lose the horses. But I get it back with supply cards. I think these are these are all right. Maybe there's a time where I just don't want any more supplies. But so far, I can't think of anything. I'm killing. This is like where like I can play this and then. 
uh, when I play the, the stockpile, I can gain a copy of the stockpile. Or I can just mine the copper and get a get like a stockpile anyways, but I get rid of a uh, copper. So they kind of both do the same thing except I lose a gold by playing mine. Two, three, it's, it's an infinite amount of money, right? So... I don't know. But it is in my... So somehow exile effects come back to my discard pile. I don't know how that worked. But I'm gonna mine just to mill my own bad treasures, confirm thrashing. And I'm gonna keep getting stockpiles. Continue. I don't know why. Now I can buy... I don't know why the option exists. Maybe I wanna return it before... You know, before it gets ner enters my hand. There's no interactions, I think, in the buy phase with drawing, so... Uh, it's all very confusing for me. If it's confusing for you, don't worry. It's just as confusing for myself as well. Um, we can always mine stockpiles to become gold. That's also a way. But with two, we can buy a supply, or we can play a stockpile and buy one more thing. You know what, why don't I play a stockpile to buy a stockpile? And buy it out. I think then they're permanently in my deck and the computer cannot get it anymore. You know what? I like that idea. Let me just use all three and just buy stockpiles. And I think this is good, right? Because I get to choose. Maybe every time you gain the copy, you get to choose whether they want it back. I get to choose to just keep them exiled and then bring that back later. And just for a big play. But I think I'll just like put them in my discard pile. Like maybe I want to keep them aside so I don't do, uh, dilute my draws. I don't get more treasures. I want more actions. And then when I want to push for a win, I get all the stockpile treasures, right? We're getting six gold. This is a incredible vassal or just supplies. Uh, sorry, or just mine. Mine can get rid of supply to get... There's no five cost treasure here, so I don't see why. Uh, let me play the vassal here. I discarded a stockpile. It hurts. I did not get the action, but at least that's two gold. And uh, I'm gonna go for that play where I just get buy out the stockpile. Maybe this game means I just get get buy out the stockpile, buy out the supply, and then buy out any one of the victory cards, and I just win. But I don't think I worry too much about winning against the computer. From what I see so far, the computer ain't that good. But you know, like we, we bought everything, let's do a discard from exile and then we can buy one last thing for three coins. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Chapel, in case I want to burn something out. No, just give me supplies. It's fine. It's fine, I just draw more stuff. There's no, so there's no action boosting card in the game. There's no card that gives you two actions, I don't think. So you can only play one thing a turn. Like one action net total in a turn. Except for cycling cards. I couldn't play a card and then play two more afterwards. So you know, like horses cycles itself, that's all good. Uh, now my problem is do I want to play Killin and uh, uh, clone a supply for example? Because that's all I got to do. Let me, uh, let me play card and just see how that interacts with. So what I did is that I made the opponent review a state and a gold, exile the gold, it went out of the game, I guess, and then discarded the estate. So I think the, com the computer may have spent turns earlier that I didn't... So yeah, place three silvers, bought a gold. So they bought the gold to boost like how much treasure they can build up, and then I just, I just got rid of it from the game. That was a uh, quite a nifty play here. But I play five up to five. I can only buy one thing up to five. I've not used uh, the killing and yet, but I think I'll play the council room because I think I may be in a position to go for win conditions now. Because all my treasures are in the form of stockpiles, I'm not sure how how it works yet, ish. But I'm fine with drawing and let's mine and burn the copper. We confirm thrashing it, and this time. We can either get a supply or a silver. Let's get some silvers. That's fine. I made bad cards. Great. Just put it all out there. Five base. Look at that. I can buy promises already pretty much. 
but I do think what would I want to to do here? It. I mean, if I buy the supply, I better buy something else to cut. Like I can spend these buy supplies, but I'm losing one coin every time because you know I don't have enough buys to do that. For a gold, probably better, more value to buy like a mine and uh, goat herd. I don't know. Okay, maybe a vassal and a killing. Having two of these in the deck already, having one them one of these in the deck, I'll get another council room. That's what I'll do. But you know the computer is making like an extremely thin deck and they're buying stuff every turn. So maybe you know what? Uh they're gonna smoke me here because they're just buying one of these victory points card every turn. And that might be uh too fast for me to deal with. Have I thought about that? No. No, not at all. Uh maybe I'm playing too slowly. And that's a problem. So what I'll tell you is that now I'm gonna strash a copper, get a silver, and then just buy a buy a promise to match up the victory point, just to see what the computer is doing. And I really hope I don't lose to the computer. <laughs> uh, yeah, just let's just see this. We got a promise. We end buys. And let me figure out why the music has stopped. Continue watching. I did find a royalty-free playlist. For music and that's nice they bought another province this is a problem for me yikes I would like to uh, to not have that happen every turn because then I might lose the game one two five I could buy a duchy that's not interesting enough for me and play cardinal to mess with their remaining draws but because they bought on both turns I think uh, maybe I don't do that Maybe council room to be able to buy the promise because I don't have enough to buy yet and the draw will be really useful for me. Let me do that. I drew I estate two supplies and a stockpile. So I did draw enough to uh to buy. So let me play all the supplies. Copper. I mean I'm gonna play the stockpiles for sure. So then I have four buys, I'm gonna buy the promise to match up on the victory point. In the lead. Okay, so I'll buy a supply. Maybe that I lose my deck in a way that is not good. But we'll see. He buys a province again. There's only three left. The game is wrapping up to an end and uh, slowly escaping from my grasp. But play the horses first, always. We have five stockpiles. I think the stockpile game is uh, is pretty strong. I think we're, we're all right. Uh, how much gold do we got? Let's just play the treasures. It's fine. We have 5, 15, we have 20. I cannot buy all 3. If I buy all 3, the game ends, right? But I do like the idea of buying 2 of these. Buying 2 and a duchy, and next turn I just buy the problems and win the game. Let me tell you, I'm definitely gonna buy 1. That means I can buy 2. And the question is, like, do I. I have 4 gold left over, which means I can't buy the duchy even if I wanted to. So maybe this is where I end, is buy 2 provinces and count my losses. Or I play this and I buy a supply. Hmm, I don't know. And also, be I don't get the option to put the stockpile back into my discard pile anymore because I think you need more stockpile in there. I guess I did like a really strong push and now I'm suffering the, the consequences of it. Let's save the gold equivalent for later because uh, just buy two province piles. We're ahead in victory points. I don't, I'm not too worried. Note that we couldn't buy something, put more treasures and buy again and then buy. You had to commit all your treasures up front, which is on purpose. So now if we buy the promise, we win the game. Victory point, we're in the lead. The game ends when the promise pile runs dry. So let's try to get that, but it's hard. You see how we don't have, our monies are not real silvers and gold, we just have stockpiles, so we have exhausted it, and now we're in a terrible shape. <sighs> Vassal plus two, that's not enough. 
This gets me to three, which means I can buy a Dutch uh, a silver. Yikes. Might have to do it the turn after. The last turn, they buy a duchy. So so I do want to stay on par if possible, but I don't think there's a there's a way. First getting a copy of it, I don't know if it's in my hand or not, but from what I know about this game, if it's getting a copy in your hand, it's gonna be in your hand. But let me find out. So this is a world where if he buys the last promise for six points. The computer wins, right? 28 versus 27. Well, I gotta buy something this turn. Even if I buy a state, I gotta buy something because the computer can just always tie me. I wanna buy a duchy. So that means cloning, using this to clone one of the other coins, if that's how it works. So I'm gonna do this. Helen. You may buy cards. What? No, I play supply. Again, in my discard pile. Yikes, so I have four, so I must gain the victory point here, otherwise if the computer buys at this top, we lose, so we the game has ended, the computer bought the province, 28-28, did we lose or win or draw? It feels really bad to draw the computer, but we tied, yay, you know, new to this game, but you know, this has been Dominion, it was, uh, we well, definitely could have won. I, like there's a point where you know this when do you start ramping for victory points I started the turn after the computer because the computer started ramping and I realized okay I'm not playing just like house here I gotta race but somewhere in that turn I think uh, between uh, between pushing for buying out all the promises maybe I should have waited and bought the final two promise card and the turn when I'm strong but then I did that push early I missed the turn to buy the promise and it fell apart could have lost the game, but you know, that's, that was a computer. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. This is being Cosmos Badly Plays Dominion. And if you like this kind of content, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot. And you can expect more Dominion on the channel with, when I'm playing against uh, Zozos, one of my friends. And uh, you know, see you next time. See ya.